I'm John Bollinger with Premier Guitar, and I'm with Satchel. He is the driving force of Steel Panther, the one-man guitar army. I, I can't take all the credit. I just, I book the flights, I write the songs, I tell everybody what to do, and, you know, I'm pretty much the main guy you, in the you, band. You are the... I also get... I'm not trying to brag, but I do get the most pussy. As yeah, well. yeah, <laughs> obviously. Yeah, you are. You're like the. Uh, you're like the Eddie of uh, of this band. Listen, I mean, you know, let's just put it this way: if Valerie Bernelli <laughs> was here right now, I'd be fucking her. <laughs> <laughs> can I say that? I, I, it's uh, the internet. I can say anything yeah, I want, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's horrible. That's yes. horrible. He said he was gonna fuck Valerie. <laughs> no, I just said I would. Yeah, I would. sure. I mean, well, who wouldn't at this point, right? Valerie, the ball is in your court. Uh, in Literally and figuratively. <laughs> in the meantime, let's talk about this guitar in celebration of your new album. Congratulations. Thank it's fabulous. You. Thank you. We have a brand new record called On the Prowl. It's out now for free. It's free. <laughs> Guys, the new business model is really working out for <laughs> listeners out there. You can listen to it for free. Our album is free. And this is, uh, this is the, the cover of our album. And, uh, and Ron, my buddy Ron, painted this ron williams is his name and he's super awesome at art and uh and that's 1987 people are like what? why 1987 well that's the year that i hit retirement age i'm just kidding i was <laughs> i was only in my mid-40s at that point but 19 we have a song called 1987 and uh we put. We actually sold some of these guitars. No, oh, um, fabulous for a small. I think they were they were going for like only like seventy five bucks or something. It was crazy. Now we're selling some miniature versions on our on our website steelpantherocks.com, but we sold some some full real life versions of this guitar as well, and I think they sold out. We didn't sell a whole lot of them, but but uh, this is a badass looking guitar. God, I love it. Okay, it so is. Tell me about first of all the uh, the inlays on the neck are. They are. Great. They're one of a kind. I can't believe nobody ever did this before. Those are strippers. Yeah, on the and pole. That's what. That's what strippers. Those are silhouettes of strippers in Las Vegas, because the ones that you find in Oklahoma City are much bigger. So, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, they're basically dancing around the poles, and it looks badass on a guitar neck. Can you zoom in on that? How great! It's it's like, and that was Ron's idea, and I was like, how come nobody ever came up with that idea before? stripper inlays on the frets and then i realized as i was trying to play this guitar that i don't know where the dots are because there's strippers <laughs> everywhere so when i play this guitar i hit a lot of bad notes for that one little but distracting totally worth it it's okay though because our singer hits bad notes all night <laughs> so it doesn't really matter it actually works better it's kind of like led zeppelin 4 everything's out of tune but it's just in the right way right yeah hey so. can you show the back of it too because yes that is oh the back equally... the back is like almost the best part right yeah i need to i need to do um yeah it's a beautiful mouth it's actually my singer's mouth <laughs> it looks good um yeah the, the paint job's amazing and actually a lot of people don't um you can't really tell just unless you really zoom in but if you zoom zoom in on the fine tuners it does say vagina Oh, spills out vagina. That's sweet. That's which is, <laughs> which is totally great. Like somebody's yeah. gonna try to cancel me. He can't see vagina on the fine tuners. <laughs> That's offensive. <laughs> yeah, but when it's perfectly in tune, you can read it. Like that's how you know you're in tune. You don't even listen to the guitar. You just know that when the, when it's the letters line up. I don't even care if it's in tune. I just care if people can read vagina on there. Sure. Um, so, but yeah, it's a, this guitar is a, is a Charvel. It's got now a stripper on You've got a signature. Uh, you got a signature model. Are they going to release this as a signature as well? You know what? If Charvel uh, gets their goddamn act together, they will. Right. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I, I we did release a limited uh, edition of of this. Like I said, I don't know if there's an easy way to do like a like a. A version of this because it's like you know oh yeah it's not easy to do all this stuff um but but i do have a, a really awesome guitar over here and this one is this is actually uh it's a short bell this is my personal handle handler nick rucker uh he's he's uh Hello. not only our front of house guy and he and he tells me what to do writes all the lyrics writes all the music <laughs> and he takes the guitars away um but he brings me the slightly slightly different but just as bitchin model this is the model the satchel model you can get at uh, one of them i don't know if you can get you can't get the yellow and black one anymore uh, i think you they're, they're doing a white and black one 
kind of looks like a zebra now. Oh yeah, beautiful. Um, but this was a uh, this was a neon zebra, which actually they started to do that now that they've got mRNA and they're putting it at everybody. They started to put glow in the dark zebra DNA into zebras now, and which is really great. I mean, this new technology is really amazing. Uh, they can make your dick glow. I don't, know, I don't know if you know that. It's really neat. That way you can you can always pee at night without having to turn the light on. Where do um, I sign up? That yeah, is great. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. That is great. Great ideas with this mRNA technology. And yeah. this, this is one of my guitars, one of the satchel models. Uh, all of the satchel models have, um, those are, I think it's uh, 37 frets. <laughs> Sure, and fat frets. Those are uh, oh, they're fat. Yeah, they're super fat. They're like uh, you can bend. I could bend uh, like I don't even know, like tw an octave, an entire octave on this if I wanted to. Uh, yeah, but I don't because I, you know what? It's it's like showing off for no reason. Right. Like you know, I I could walk into a bar and fuck your girlfriend, but I'm not gonna do that. Not in front of your face. You know, <laughs> I'll wait till later. But. So sometimes when I'm alone in a room, I'll bend like, octa like an octave just to see if I can do it. Uh, and I also lift weights with my fingers sometimes. Just sure. put weights. I'll put like a 75 pounds on my fingers and I'll just do that. It helps with the bending. Bending is really important. A lot of kids, Yeah. when I say kids, I mean everybody under 60, they don't understand how important the bends are. A lot of people are too busy trying to play fast all the time. And... Uh, but it's important to have big frets. Sure. And, you know, I, I've always opted for, like, jumbos. I think these might be considered jumbo frets, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Those are big. Those are jumbo. I mean, yeah. they're not, like, you know, when you get a stock, like, Telecaster or something, yeah. it's like, oh, my God, these are little baby frets. How do these country guys do it? And then you see a country guy with his little cowboy hat and short hair, and you're like, yeah. this guy's so adorable. He's got tiny frets. <laughs> and then he just rips. And you're like, fuck these guys. <laughs> you know? And then, you know, I always try to give country guys distortion pedals, just so I'm like, just playing too clean. You're too intimidating. You know what I mean? Like, dirty up your sound a little bit. Sure. Am yeah. I rambling right now? Oh, uh, no. I no. did a bunch of cocaine Satchel, right this is all the... pure gold. <laughs> this is all gold. Okay, no, I great. love it. Yeah, I mean, you know, you guys can thank me later. Yeah. When you, yeah. Get, when you have, like, a, over a thousand views on this. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Nick's helping oh, out a little Nick, bit there. Um, sometimes my pants ride low and he comes and hikes them up. Sure. Thank you, Nick. Good tech. Um, okay, so basically you're switching between your signature and this new beautiful one-off. Yes, I've got a couple guitars. You know, I try to keep it minimal when I'm out on the road. We do, we do have some guitar changes on this tour, like I'm playing a 12-string on, uh, on the song 1987. Oh, would you mind if we look at that? No, we can check that out. Yeah. Um, do you keep it on the stand? Uh, uh, this is, uh, yeah, I do. I actually keep it on the stand because... I switch off between doing um, this one guitar part. And I really shouldn't even have the bottom three strings because it's only, it's uh, the top three strings that I play, but I switch between that and the, um, this guitar. Uh, this is tuned different right now. There's, there's different tunings. The more records you put out as a band, the more you start to go, gosh, we've done 43, songs in the key of E flat, right? So, cause we tuned down E flat, like old Van Halen school stuff. So we started, you know, I started doing more tunings, like tuning to 440, just to, just to give, you know, different tonalities on the record and stuff. But this is a, a song that we're, we've been doing. It's called 1987 and uh, we really like it. And um, I, I know this is gonna sound really crazy. It went to number one on the German rock charts. And we were like, well, we have to learn it for Germany, so we might as well play it in the United States. And, uh, but unfortunately, it's tuned to 440, so I'm, I'm using a 440 guitar, using this 12 string, which is actually tuned to 440, except that the high E string is tuned down to E flat, so I can get the major third of the B, B chord. So like. Oh yeah. And that's the only part, but it's like, we gotta bring this whole damn guitar. It's a huge pain in the ass. Kids, do something easy like play the drums. <laughs> it's so much easier. Hit stuff. Yeah, hit stuff. Well, that's, well it's, it's, it sounds great, and I love the whole musicality of it. That's Thank awesome. you, it, it's, it is worth it sometimes. You know, when, when I was thinking about like getting a, a, double, a double neck guitar, and calling, I called my, my buddy Mike Tempesta, 
at Charvel, and I was like, hey, you know, can I get a double neck made? And he said, yeah, totally. It's, it's going to cost you about seven grand. I said, all right, see you later. Quick, yeah. Hung up. No, he, he, uh, they said they can make anything, but they don't, have, they don't have stock double necks. Sure. So I didn't get a double neck, and, and that's why I've got this on a, on, this is called a Gracie stand, right? So I got this on a Gracie stand. Very complicated stuff. It's not, this is why we, we pay our, everybody that works with us a lot of money, and I go home with about $7 after the tour. Yeah, no, I, I, I get it. I get it. I know. Uh, so that covers basically guitars. Now, yes. uh, amp and effects wise, why don't we take a walk over there? Yes, let's do that. We, 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 can, uh, we can move this yep, baby there away. There you go. Nick, thank right. you. We have to return that to the rental co company when we're done. Yeah. So, so, yeah, as far as amps go, you know, over the years, um, you know, when, when, I, when I started off back in the day, uh, I, you know, I would play through pretty much whatever. I mean, I was very broke as a teenager. Sure. And I didn't have a lot of money. Back in the 80s, there was a lot of uh, Brad, you remember, remember Bradshaw? I think it was oh, yeah, yeah, Bradshaw, yeah, yeah. the, the oh, racks. Oh yeah, Bradshaw, racks. Oh yeah. And everybody had these racks and I was like, you know, God, I hated all these rich kids with rich parents and all the parents <laughs> were buying them racks. And I was like, you know, I noticed though that they could afford all these racks, but the more stuff you put on your rack, the, the more it, it sounded processed, it was hard to hear the guitar over the drums. And, and so I was always sort of opting for the less is more approach. Just give me a guitar with a good pickup and an and a amp. Um, and so I did that for a long, long time. And I didn't have a whole lot of pedals. But uh, a few, probably about eight years ago, would you say? Eight years ago when we switched over? 2015. Yeah, so about eight years ago. Um, there was, you know, they started coming out with all the uh, amp mo modelers. Well, it was before that, but I, I kept hearing about amp modelers. Yeah. And I was, I was one of the, those old dudes that was just like, I don't care, dude. You know, take your amp modeler and shove it up your ass. Because I'm never, ever going to play with an amp modeler. And I'm never going to use a pocket pussy. I'm always going to fuck real girls. And so... You're gonna, you might yeah. have to bleep that out, but I don't yeah, care if you do or not. It's a good analogy. You know what? It's the real. It a, is. It's a, That's the thing. Like, it's a solid ain't nothing analogy. like the real thing sure. until <laughs> until eventually they're gonna invent this AI girl who's like a robot and she talks to you and tells you your dick is big and she's just telling you all the right yeah. shit and her pussy feels real and then that's when the human race comes to a complete halt because <laughs> nobody ever reproduces after that and we're just all in a room having sex with robots all day and I'm sure there's people testing them out right now that are having a great time doing it for free. But yeah. uh, the future is now. The future yes. is now and, and uh, about eight years ago, um, we were approached by a company uh, named, it was called Atomic, and they make a thing called the Amplifier. And uh, I started using that, and, and the sounds in it were so great. And it was, uh, and we're actually modeling the uh, 5152, right? Oh, great. Isn't that what it is? And, uh, and it sounds killer. I've been using the same, pretty much the same uh, tones for the last eight years. It sounds great. If it ain't, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, but yeah, so we've, so I've, I've basically my entire, my entire, uh, everything that you hear at a Steel Panther show that goes through the PA and it sounds super large and, you know, really the, the key to, uh, the, the selling point on all of this, there's a couple things for me. It's all right here. So it's all uh, it's very compact. I could carry this by myself on an airplane and, um, and basically, um, go f do a flight aid if I wanted to. Sure. And, uh, wouldn't, you know, it wouldn't really cost me anything. I could, I could just carry that and, uh, and my, and my guitar and I, I could go do a gig anywhere and it sounds great. It's, you know, it's, it's got, um, six different channels, which is more than enough because I really only need a few. And so you got your clean channel. You got your uh, rhythm. And you got lead. Cut. And uh, you know, you've got different uh, little, little setting like de delay, delay setting.
that kind of stuff. So, so I, I've got everything right here in the amp, and I've got the uh, 1987 pedal as well if I want a different kind of boost. Now, for my... who, who made the 87 pedal? Uh, well, we, we, we worked with a secret company okay. to do that. And, Is um, that going to be like a signature thing as well? Yeah, it's actually for sale on our, on our website, oh, and uh, it's got delay and, and a distortion on it. Oh, and, um, that's a great idea. Yeah, yeah. it's great. Well, we've got, we've got a line of pedals out that we sell on our website, and they're all really good. We've got the uh, well, the infamous Pussy Melter. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, yeah. That's very difficult to get yeah. now. We we sold a limited run of that, and um, we we've also got the Poontang Boomerang, which is, is a delay. This is sure. a delay and a distortion in one. It sounds great on its own. It also sounds great as a as a boost. But uh, and I've got a tuner, and I've also got a, a, a phaser. MXR phaser. Gotta have it. Just in case somebody forces us to play Van Halen, which, sure. you know, at this point in the game, you know, now that Eddie's gone and, uh, and we all love Eddie. And, and uh, we, we played a lot of covers before we did records and, and, uh, and we were very, very good at doing Van Halen. So we do, we will occasionally do Van Halen and uh, it's, it's fun. It's fun for oh, the crowd, yeah. it's fun for us. Um, and we, we, uh, yeah, so we car I carry that, but listen, this is, everything is just all right here in one compact little place. There's been times when, uh, you know, so it saves money. You don't have to drag amps everywhere. Sure. Yeah. Um, and it's easier when it break, when, if it ever does break down, which is rare, occasionally, you know, we get hit with beer because sure. I don't know why that is. People like to throw beer at me in, in, in particular. Um, and I remember we got doused. Uh, when we were in, um, I think it was in, we were in Poland somewhere, and somebody threw a beer, and it was just the perfect throw. Like, the beer stayed in the glass, and it didn't come out until it landed on top of the amp, and it shorted the whole thing out. But we have a backup, and we put the backup up, and we were up and running within, like, two minutes. And it, the, the great thing about these are, like, the, once you have the settings that you like, yeah. uh, it's basically, you can, you can just have that, in your computer and you can make the other backup sound exactly the same. So when it's going to the PA as opposed to an amp where, you know, you got to set up the mic, there's always going to be, you know, differences between sure. amp heads and tubes and uh, cabinets and where you put the mic on the speaker. And when this is all set up, uh, it basically sounds the same every night. We're all on inner monitors because, uh, you know, it's just easier to, be happy when you're on inner monitors. And it also saves on your hearing because I, uh, I lost about 97% of my hearing in the first 50 years of my career. And um, it really does help you keep it at a manageable volume level, especially when you have a drummer who doesn't know what the word dynamics means. And he's just pounding the cymbal <laughs> in your brain. And um, so, but we, I like drummers like that. I like drummers that hit hard but it's a little easier when you're on inners. But when you go on inners, and here's the thing, like a lot of guys out there, a lot of guitar players, a lot of singers, we're, we all get used to like, you know, you start off in a band and, and, you, uh, and you just, you like plugging into an amp and turning it up and being in control, like having yeah. that control and um, hearing the drummer over there, hearing the bass player over there, you have, you have that, you hear the room. And when you first go on inners, it's, it's, it really sucks because you're like, you don't feel like you're in control. You have to tell your monitor guy what what to do, what to give you, and everything sounds like you're in the studio. So it's very uh, sterile sounding, and it doesn't give you it doesn't give you it doesn't inspire you in particular. Uh, but it really does uh, give you. It, it's easier to sing and it's easier to hear everything. So once you get the mix going, it it's really good for saving your ears and for hearing the whole band. So, you know, that's how you end up firing bass players because it's like, oh, this guy sucks. <laughs> um, so, but no, it's really good for, 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 for hearing everything and for saving your ears. And this, you know, when you move to an amp modeler, it really makes the consistency a million times better because you're not moving the mic from night to night. And for us, like, you know, we tour in internationally. And when we go down to like Australia, you know, they're like, they're crazy down there. They're like, ju they just discovered electricity like two years ago. Yeah. And so you plug your amp in and it's like, you know, the amp sounds like it's, you know, it's either too hot or too cold. Like you got to change the tubes every two hours. It's bizarre. But 
But with this, it's like it's all uh, digital. So there's no, there's no, you don't have to like, you know. I mean, I'm telling you. I know I sound like Eric Johnson right now. There's a difference between the <laughs> nine volt, the Duracell nine volt, and the energy. I don't care what you say. But there, there are differences in like just the elect the electricity oh, in yeah. certain con countries. It makes amps sound a little bit different. But uh, with this consistency all across the board, I know I'm rambling, but that's what happens when you do cocaine, kids. I'm sorry. It's great. No, perfect. I, I love it. And the the only other pedal next to the 87. What is what is that one? Well. This is a compressor, right, Nick? It's not a compressor. What is it? It's the uh, Way Huge Conspiracy Theory. Way Huge. Way Huge is a great company. And what, is, what exactly does it do? Is it, is, it, is it a... It's a transparent overdrive. It's a copy of a very famous pedal with the, the guy with a centaur on it. Transparent overdrive. Now, I, I noticed that the, the sound is a little smoother. That's what it does. Like, a, like you know, pr pretty much like everything. It doesn't really... Uh, it's the same sound as if I wouldn't ha have it on, but th does it does it limit the top the the volume a little bit? Is that what it does? In that setting we have, where it's like a clean boost, we're like barely using any gain on it. So it's yeah, so this so this is a way huge and um, but what what is the, the uh, it's a copy of what pedal? Klon. The Klon. Yeah. Okay, and that thing's like what eighteen million dollars? Yes. But this thing's like only what like a couple hundred bucks. Yeah, so it's so it's a really good deal if you if, you know if you want to save about nine hundred thousand dollars, <laughs> the way way huge makes some great pedals. Yeah, as well and um, and uh, Nick Nick is my go-to pedal guy for he he he's always trying new stuff. So it's fun it's fun to have Nick. But you know Nick costs a lot of money, kids. You can't have him. Sorry, <laughs> I'm keeping yeah. him for myself. But uh, but yeah, so so that's but that's pretty much it for now. I will I will switch pedals out occasionally from tour to tour, and, um, but I, I do like to keep it simple. I do not have a big pedal board. If for no other reason, more things can go wrong. Oh yeah. And I don't like, I don't like, if it's, shit starts to go wrong and I'm, you know, and I don't, if I can't fix it, then that's not good. Cause I'm, I'm like, then I just, I get frustrated. So I keep it simple. And um, just like the strings, you're never gonna see me play a seven string guitar, guys. I'm never gonna do it. it took me. 50 years to learn how to play six strings. Yeah. You know? Speaking of strings, what? It's like, hey, I made a girl and she's got two vaginas. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That means I have to take out twice as much trash. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, speak, speaking of strings, what, uh, what strings do you use? Uh, these strings are, I think these are they're Deuterios, right? Okay. So uh, 9 through 42. Oh, Dunlop. And, yeah, Dunlops. Oh, Dunlop. So, you know what? It starts with a D. I apologize. <laughs> to the Dunlop people because they give us these with a 3% discount and they're very, very good. Uh, but nine through 42 Dun Dunlops, I, I guess I've been using these for a while, right? 10, 15 years. Yeah. And, uh, but I use their picks too, Dunlop picks. I mean, Dunlops, do they have a, do they have a monopoly on the pick market? It seems like they, they make the most picks, Dunlops. Like the Tortex is their, that's their I do yeah. have a tendency. To, I lean towards Tortex picks. I do have a pick with my uh, with my own face on it. Can you yeah. zoom in on that? <laughs> it's exactly what I look like. I looked like 50 years ago when I was in my 30s. You zoom on that. Uh, and so this is uh, drawn by a friend of the band's. And her name is Hylewin Fowler, right? Hylewin Fowler. Fowler. There you go, Hylewin. I give you a little shout out. Um, but I think we're gonna get rid of these because I'm tired of these. Um, but no, they're great picks. Uh, the, the, uh, the Tortex makes, they make, Dunlop makes great picks and they make great strings as well. Thanks, Nick. Um, so yeah, the 9 through 42, I've always played 9 through 42, although I do, I do use 10s uh, when I'm in the studio recording sometimes, just they stay in, they, it's easier to do rhythms and, and dig into it a little bit more. Sure. Um, but when you're, when you're wanking on stage and doing heavy metal, it's, it's good to have 9s. Uh, makes it a little bit easier. And uh, I do play a Floyd Rose. I know you've already noticed that, all you Floyd Rose guys out there. There's a lot of guitar players out there that don't play, um, they don't play, well, some of my Floyds, like on this tour, I, I, I have both my main guitars are, they're, they're set, the bridges are set. So they can't go back, they're not floating. That's just so if I, if I break a string, uh, I can still play a chord and it'll be in tune. 
Uh, and I, if I break a string, I like to just wait till the end of the song to switch guitars. Um, but um, a lot of guys out there, they're, they're um, you know, they use they use standard bridges and they don't like Floyd's. And if you're one of those guys, you're totally fucking wrong. You're missing out on a huge, awesome part of life that will make you feel good about yourself and get a lot of girls. And um, Floyd Rose makes, in my opinion, and they don't pay me to say this, they they invented the best tremolo system right out of the gate. Uh, it, you know, for heavy metal. You know, I know. I remember seeing Eddie back in like eighty. I think well, when did he start using those? Eighty three or eighty four or something? It might have been before yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. But uh, but when I saw Eddie, I saw Eddie have he had one. I was like, well, I think that's the way to go. And I, I think I may have tried a couple other systems out, but these were just made right from the beginning. There's really nowhere that the string can go out of tune. So if you're setting it up well. It just stays in tune pretty much the whole show. You know, a little bit out of tune. You might have to fine tune it, but uh, every every few songs. But for the most part, it stays in tune great. You know, and I'm, I know if you're like if you're 75 like me, you I'm preaching to the choir. But if you're a kid and you're like 14, you just started playing guitar and you want a whammy bar, this really is the way to go. He's come on every satchel model. I think they're on a lot of short bells as well. So. Sure. Uh, and any rock guitar that's that you want to stay in tune, just put a Floyd on it. There we go. Those words to live by from, from guitar icon Satchel. Satchel, thanks so much. Congratulations. You guys are taking over the world. Thank you. Oh, my God. We are, we are just killing it. We're in Nashville tonight. All the country people want us out of town. Oh, they do. But we're going to yeah. just They're picketing right now. Pillage They're, this place. Yeah. It's going to be great. Okay. Till next time. Thanks, you guys. And remember, don't stop picking. <laughs>